Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we've looked at a lot of mini PCs here on the channel, but not one this mini. Uh, this is the Q2 from Leva. It's coming out soon, and it's a full-blown Windows PC in a very small form factor. It's about the size of a computer mouse, maybe a little bit smaller than that. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this thing and what you can and can't do with it in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Leva. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little PC is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, these will cost around $200 depending on the configuration. The one they sent us has an N4000 Celeron processor inside. It's got four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. 32 gigs is not enough for Windows these days, in my opinion, and the opinion of many of you watching. Uh, so they do have a 64 gigabyte version that will be available as well. And that would be the version I would recommend if you are shopping for one of these things, just to have enough space to work with on it. And the build quality on this feels pretty nice. It's got a decent heavy feel to it. It is made out of plastic, but it's a higher quality, thicker plastic. So altogether, I think they've done a nice job on the case. You can easily take it apart, which is what we did the other day on the Extras channel. Uh, the screws here will unscrew, but stay with the case like they do on the Intel NUC. But as easy as it is to get inside of it, uh, there isn't any upgrading you can do because everything is soldered down. Uh, interestingly though, the uh, I.O. ports here, the USB ports and some of the other ports I'll show you in a minute, are all on a daughter board that can be removed. So it looks like they've got some modular design to this, but there's really nothing you can swap in in its place. So my suggestion would be to get the configuration uh, that you need when you buy it because you cannot upgrade it later. You do have some ports on here. We've got a USB 3.0 port over here and a 2.0 port next to it. Your power switch and power light are there. On this side, you've got an SD card slot for a micro SD card. Uh, you can go up to 128 gigabytes on that card according to the specifications. And then on the back here, we've got gigabit ethernet and HDMI output. Uh, we were able to get it to drive a 4K display at 60 Hertz. So it looks like an HDMI 2.0 output on that one. And then you've got your power uh, connector there. And that is pretty much it. You've got a nice big HDMI sticker. It's funny how big this sticker looks on a little PC. And then above that is a Kensington lock slot for locking it down. It also came with a Visa mount plate in the box as well. So you're able to uh, mount it on the back of a monitor if you want. But I think it's just so cool to have such a little tiny PC. I'd want people to see what it looks like. Now this is not fanless. I initially thought that it was, but it's got a very small fan built in. Uh, it's not all that noisy, so it won't really distract you at all, uh, but that is needed to try to keep it cool given how compact everything is here. And we'll take a look at its thermal performance a little bit later here in the video. So let's take a look now and see how it does with some basic tasks. We'll start off with some web browsing and my YouTube channel playing back a 60 frames per second 1080p video. As you can see here, we're dropping a couple of frames here and there. Nothing significant, but a little bit more than what we typically see with a mini PC like this one. And that's one of the things that I've noticed over the course of playing around with this is that it does feel a little sluggish compared to other mini PCs we have looked at. And I'm guessing it's due to the small size and uh, perhaps the uh, thermal issues that you might encounter with something this tiny. But again, nothing deal breaking. Just don't expect uh, performance like you'd see out of a slightly larger mini PC. And we also took a look at the NASA.gov homepage using Wi-Fi. It's got Wi-Fi built in. That rendered up pretty nicely, as you can see here, nothing terrible. But again, I was noticing it getting a little sluggish here and there, a little bit more than I've seen on other PCs running with the same processor. We also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test, and there we got a score of 66.9 on version 1.0 and 38.4 on version 2.0. Uh, scores there lined up pretty much with what we've seen on other PCs running with this processor, but I do think that over time uh, you might see your performance fluctuate a little bit just due to the compact size and some of the thermal issues that that might introduce. And we loaded up Microsoft Office and everything seemed to perform adequately there as well. So altogether for a basic Windows PC, it seems to be doing a lot of what uh, you would expect it to. Now we don't have high gaming expectations for this device, but we did try a few and you see Rocket League here uh, running on screen. Uh, there at 1080p, we were getting about 15 to 20 frames per second at the lowest settings. 
Uh, we then turned everything down to 720p and got around a more solid 20 frames per second. So not spectacular here. Uh, there are some Gemini Lake processors that can do a little bit better, but again, our expectations were low. Uh, we also ran Half-Life 2, and there we were seeing about 40 frames per second at 1080p. I do think older games are probably very well suited for a little PC like this one, and Half-Life is certainly a great one to play on a platform like this. And then we also tried out Shovel Knight, a retro-inspired game. Generally, we were getting about 60 frames per second, but we were seeing uh, frame dips to 35 to 55 frames per second when there was a lot of stuff going on on screen. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 2,541. That puts it in line with what we've seen on many other mini PCs powered by similar processors. So you'll get about the same performance. Uh, just note that this is not a AAA gaming device, so those older games, as I mentioned, are probably uh, your best bet along with uh, perhaps some retro emulation. I think you'll be able to do uh, 8 and 16-bit emulation on this thing without a problem and probably uh, getting into the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1 without issues as well. And that's pretty consistent with what we've seen on other mini PCs that have this processor inside. Now, thermals I was very curious about given the compact size and uh, how hard it is sometimes to keep something this small cool. And we ran the Fire Strike stress test from 3D Mark, and there we got a failing grade of 88.5%. Uh, 97% is passing, and you can also see the temperatures we were experiencing uh, when running that test. So I think what you'll see with this is the more you do with it, the slower it's going to get, especially when you put it under load. Because when these chips get too hot, the only way to cool them down uh, is to have them run a little slower so they can get rid of some of that heat. And it does have a fan, so that helps. But again, you're not going to uh, have a consistent experience with this one. Uh, and we noticed that uh, through some of the sluggishness that we experienced that I talked about a little bit earlier. So I would say this is probably best suited for uh, some lower key tasks that don't require consistent performance all the time. Uh, we did look at that PC from Pepper Jobs the other day that doesn't throttle down at all. So that might be a better solution if you really want to push this platform to the limits. But uh, overall, it is performing pretty nicely, I think, for its little compact size. Now, as for power consumption, this did about 4 watts at idle and 7 watts under full load. So it's not going to impact your electric bill all that much if it's left on all the time. So it might be a good little Windows Server solution if you're looking for a very low-powered way to offer some services to your network. Now, we also ran some home theater tests on this one. We uh, have Cody here running with the Jellyfish test file that we like to run. Uh, that is a 140 megabit per second 4K file, 10-bit uh, HEVC. Uh, these Gemini Lake chips can decode that. You'll notice, though, that there were some skip frames when it started, and then it I uh, was able to play it back fine once everything got going. And that skipping initially was something we noticed every time we tried to get uh, that video file running on here. But I don't think you'll have an issue running uh, higher-end video on this once those do start. It didn't look like it dropped any frames once it got going. It also passed through lossless audio uh, to my home theater system. So we were able to play back some Blu-ray MKV files on it without any issues at 1080p. It doesn't support HDR, so I won't recommend it for 4K video playback, uh, but it was successfully switching my TV into 24p and, again, supporting those lossless audio formats. So that was really nice to see on here. And one last thing to check out, and that is its Linux support. We booted up Ubuntu on this, and everything worked, including video, audio, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and Bluetooth. So all the usual suspects seemed to perform as we hoped it would. Uh, one thing to note is that the company does not support any other operating system beyond Windows 10. Uh, so if they perhaps do a BIOS update or something and that blows up your Linux support, they're just not going to support it. But as of the time I'm shooting this, Linux worked just fine on it. And this might be a fun little way to uh, experiment with some uh, open source operating systems, perhaps. So good stuff there. And altogether, it's just a pretty neat little functional PC uh, that I think is probably the smallest form factor we have seen in quite some time. I guess there are some stick PCs out there that are about the same size, but I just like the way this one looks and feels. It's a nice little conversation piece that is a pretty functional PC as well. Uh, just note, though, you will see some throttling on this when you put it under load. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Anuj Zaveri, 
and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.